Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Today I'll be taking a look at the facets of the personality trait neuroticism. Now in the five-factor model, neuroticism is one of the major five personality traits. We have openness to experience, conscientiousness, extroversion, agreeableness, and neuroticism. We can remember these by the acronym OCEAN. Each of these personality traits has six facets that are associated with it. Here I'll be looking at the six associated with neuroticism. Now it's important to remember that there are different ways to measure these personality traits. Even if we're just looking at the five-factor model, there are many ways to look at it in terms of measurement. One popular measurement is the NEO-PIR, and another is the International Personality Item Pool. I'm going to refer to the NEO-PIR as the NEO, and the International Personality Item Pool as International. The facets I'll be looking at here are from the International. So let's take a look at the first facet. With neuroticism, the first facet is anxiety. Now, this anxiety really doesn't necessarily line up with anxiety as we think of it from psychopathology. In a sense, it does. In a sense, it doesn't. It looks at how easily someone is worried and how often they look at the environment as dangerous. This also takes into account the regulation of the fight or flight system, meaning how easily somebody has that triggered. So here with this facet of anxiety, we're looking at general anxiety, panic, as well as specific phobias. There's often tension and nervousness associated with this facet, with a high score on this facet. Someone who scores low on the anxiety facet would be calm and generally not afraid of a lot of different circumstances. The next facet here is anger. Now on the NEO, this is referred to as angry hostility. And individuals who score high on the anger facet really have an aversion to when situations don't seem to be going their way. They are generally sensitive to being treated fairly and they are bitter when they feel like they're being cheated or something's being taken from them. Now the anger facet really doesn't deal with the expression of anger. That's measured on the agreeableness trait. This has to do with the tendency to feel angry. So somebody who scores high on anger may not appear angry to an observer. The next facet of neuroticism is depression. And just like the anxiety facet, this one doesn't necessarily align with the clinical definition of depression as we think of it in psychopathology. Someone who scores high on depression tends to be discouraged, sad. Sometimes they experience difficulty with starting tasks because of low motivation and because of low energy. Someone who scores low on the depression facet doesn't have depressive feelings, but that doesn't mean they have positive emotions like happiness. That's a separate construct that's measured on the personality trait of extroversion and has nothing to do with neuroticism or this depression facet specifically. The next facet is self-consciousness. And with this facet, we see a sensitivity to how people look at an individual. Somebody who scores high on this facet is concerned that people are looking at them negatively, evaluating them negatively, and they tend to be sensitive to that. They tend to feel awkward, embarrassed, or ashamed. Someone who scores low in self-consciousness doesn't feel like they're being evaluated negatively. They typically do well in social situations. They have a low amount of nervousness being around people and potentially being evaluated. The next facet of neuroticism is immoderation. On the NEO, we refer to this as impulsiveness. And it's interesting because when we think of the characteristic of impulsiveness, we usually think of conscientiousness. And really, it is a part of conscientiousness, but it's also a part of neuroticism. And the way we see it expressed with neuroticism is through this immoderation facet, and it's the inability to resist urges. Somebody who scores high in immoderation gives in to cravings. They tend to overindulge. Their orientation is more toward short-term gains, short-term pleasures, than appreciating any type of long-term gain. And a lot of times they're not as concerned with the consequences of giving in to these urges. The last facet of 
neuroticism is vulnerability. And vulnerability has to do with really a predisposition to panic. So in a way it has some overlap with the anxiety facet. The anxiety facet has that potential low threshold for the fight or flight and that's really what we think of as primarily the action going on with vulnerability. Meaning someone who is high in vulnerability tends to have that panic response triggered very easily. Unlike anxiety, we tend to think of vulnerability as being related to stress, meaning how easily someone panics or feels confused or helpless when a stressor is present, how resistant they are to stress. Whereas with the anxiety facet, it would be more generalized. Individuals who score low in vulnerability appear confident, poised, and calm. Now, on the very low side of vulnerability, however, there can be trouble with detachment, appearing dispassionate and distant. So, like all the facets of all the personality traits, there are positives and negatives to being high scoring or low scoring. Neuroticism, in general, if we look at these facets, is associated with poor career outcomes and other negative circumstances when scores are too high. Of course, if somebody has a lot of anxiety and depression and self-consciousness, vulnerability, immoderation, and anger, they will experience difficulties in a wide range of activities in society. Now, interestingly though, individuals who are high in neuroticism, high on these facets, tend to do better if they're also high in conscientiousness. So conscientiousness can balance to a degree high neuroticism. High neuroticism is associated, as I mentioned, with negative career outcomes, but it doesn't have to be for any particular instance. Also, somebody can have high scores on a few of these facets, but have relatively low scores on other facets. So the overall score of neuroticism really doesn't give us the detail that we see with the facets. In order to understand personality or specific personality trait, you really have to see the different facet scores. I hope you found this description of the facets of neuroticism to be interesting. Thanks for watching.